Welcome to another episode of Money's with Mover. I am Mover, C.W. Lemoyne, author of the Spectre series and the Alex Shepard series. If you haven't picked those up, please do. Uh, that helps support the channel. If you haven't picked those up already, uh, please do. The Spectre series is more of a military espionage thriller series with a lot of aviation uh, in it, and the Alex Shepard series is more law enforcement and uh, terrorism. Alex Shepard series audiobook, uh, Absolute Vengeance, is now available on Audible or iTunes or Amazon. Uh, if you're in the audiobooks, that works. So on today's episode, uh, I thought I would answer a question that I've been getting a lot since the uh, uh, what it's like to pull G's video, which is uh, how do you deal with motion sickness? Is that something that you know fighter pilots deal with? Is it something you just get over or whatever? So I thought I'd talk about my experience with motion sickness because yeah, I, you know when I was a kid I did actually uh, struggle with that and uh, I did overcome. And you know I know plenty of fighter pilots that initially had trouble with motion sickness and ended up overcoming it. So I figured that's what we were talking about today. Sorry there wasn't a video last week. Uh, actually filmed most of this last week, but had an issue with uh, some of the footage. So I had to scrap it. And then with flying and all the other stuff, I just decided uh, I would take a week off. So uh, here's that video. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. On today's episode, I thought I would answer the question I've been getting a lot of recently, which is whether or not fighter pilots get motion sickness and if G's cause motion sickness or if it's something that people can get over or if it's something that if you have, you're, you're done or, or if it's something just fighter pilots never get. Uh, a lot of you in the comments seem to be really concerned about this. So today I thought I would answer that question. And to start off, yes, I used to get motion sickness. When I was a kid, uh, roller coasters were not my thing. Anything that did any spinning, twisting, upside down, stuff like that. Uh, there was this ride called the Bullet uh, at our local spring fair that used to get me sick every single time. And I hated roller coasters. I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy them because I would get motion sickness. And well, you know, what causes motion sickness? It's kind of an inner ear thing. Uh, when your body is moving one direction, but your brain kind of thinks you're doing another thing, it, it can kind of tend to, to make you nauseous and sometimes, you know, even to the point where, you know, you lose your lunch. Uh, is it something that you can overcome? Well, when I was 13, this is a picture of 13 year old mover. You can see I'm not very happy at the time. When I was uh, 13 for my 13th birthday, uh, my dad got me a uh, lesson, I guess, with the Texas Air Aces, which is an air combat uh, maneuvering uh, choose your own adventure, kind of like what Air Combat USA is now, where you go out in a couple T-34s and you dogfight. It was, you know, an awesome birthday present. I was real into, you know, at the time, flight sim, stuff like that. And hell yeah, I wanted to go fly. After about the second set, I started puking. And I threw up from the end of that engagement until uh, we were halfway, it was in Conroe, Texas. And I think I threw up from Conroe, Texas, all the way to the Louisiana border. Uh, in Lake Charles, my dad had to kept, keep stopping because I was just miserable. I just kept getting sick over and over. And I didn't think, you know, that's one of those things. I didn't think I could be a fighter pilot because, you know, of motion sickness. And I went back a second time a couple years later for another birthday present. And that time I took Dramamine and it worked out and I had fun. Uh, obviously, Dramamine is not something I recommend. It's not something you can legally take and go fly. Uh, per the FAA or the Air Force, but it did help me uh, get through it that time and it was a lot more fun. So it, it kept me from being discouraged. When I went to uh, college, I started flying a little bit of aerobatics and I would get queasy at times, but by this point, I understood what was going on. And I think a lot of motion sickness comes from the fact that your brain doesn't really understand what's going on and you're a little nervous and you're probably hot and you're sweating. And it's a, it's a lot of mental factors. Um, if you get to, so I did the aerobatics, didn't get sick. And then I went out to pilot training. I was actually just like you guys. I was worried about motion sickness because all the way back when I was 13, I got motion sick and I couldn't take anything uh, to cope with it. So, uh, I, I was concerned, especially going in the T6s because, you know, the, your very first ride in T6s, you go out and you do uh, aerobatics and you're wearing a G suit and it's hot and it's a lot of gear that you're not used to. You're wearing a mask and stuff like that. And what I found out, uh, at least for me is you compartmentalize it. Once you're in control of the aircraft, once you're the one flying, 
you don't even think about it and it never comes up because your your brain processes that you're upside down. Your brain processes what the aircraft's doing and you don't really think about it. Now, when the instructor was flying, yeah, I might get a little queasy, but as soon as I would start flying the plane, I felt fine again. And that seemed to be the theme for, for everybody. We did have a couple people that would get motion sickness. And for those of you asking whether or not that's a deal breaker, it's not. For both the Air Force and the Navy, they will give you chances to uh, correct it. Uh, first, they'll give you a couple rides just to see if it's something that you know you can get through by on your own by just flying and you know being in control. If you can't get through it after a couple rides, they're going to note it in your grade sheets, and then they will send you to aerospace physiology. And aerospace physiology is a fine group of professionals that know how to deal with this. And what they'll do is they'll put you in what's called a barony chair. It's just a chair. They spin you around and they make you puke. And you do it enough times and eventually you stop puking. Uh, and if that doesn't work after you get through their program, there's also some meds the flight doc can do. But the bottom line is the Air Force has already invested this in you. They want you to succeed. So they're going to help you get through it. The best way to get through motion sickness is not to think about it, believe it or not, because it is mental. It is something that eventually you just get through. Now, as an experienced fighter pilot, have I gotten motion sickness since pilot training? Absolutely. Uh, you know, and I, it, it, I can name it on one hand the, the few times it's happened, but uh, one is the centrifuge because the centrifuge spins you around and your your head kind of tumbles. You, you just get this disoriented feel. That's why I call it a torture chamber because you're just disoriented, you're pulling G's, it's a hot, stuffy, kind of cramped, uh, small environment. And yeah, I, I felt like crap after I did the centrifuge both times. You did the seven and a half G profile uh, for T-38s and then I went back and did the nine G profile for the F-16 and it was just miserable, it was torture, it sucked. Uh, <clears throat> the second time I've, I've really felt bad, I didn't throw up in the airplane, but I went out to Edwards uh, in the F-16 to do, it's a high altitude recovery training, it's the uh, F-16 out of control flight demonstration. So what they do is they take uh, an, a clean F-16, two seater, and you fly out to the, uh, with the test pilot school. Uh, so you get a test pilot in your back seat and you go up to about 30 something thousand feet, high 30s, and you intentionally put the jet out of control. And the reason you do that is because you get to practice, actually, uh, it's called rocking the jet out of the spin, uh, to see the, the, the control inputs that you always practice in the simulator but you never did in the real airplane, to kind of see how that works. So you'd be inverted in an inverted spin, you'd be upright in an upright spin, and you'd depart the aircraft. And it's very disorienting, uh, it's, it's a lot of, twisting and spinning and flopping and when we got back to the hotel after that i slept for you know I, I felt queasy but it just i slept it just made me sleep for the for the rest of the afternoon because i felt so bad but uh it happens you know it's not something that you'll be immune to now can i go on a roller coaster now absolutely you know i i've over over time and with experience i've gotten through it i've gotten past it and it's something that's just you know second nature if i go in the back seat um, sometimes, yeah, that might happen. You know, I, I may get sick flying in the back seat with somebody. I try to avoid that for that very reason. But I've, you know, the other day I was flying with an instructor. I was kind of rough and ratchety because I haven't flown the jet in a while. And he's like, man, I was kind of feeling queasy back there because, you know, Hoover was flying crappy. But so it happens. It happens to experienced fighter pilots. It's not the end of the world. It's something you get through and it's something that, uh, it shouldn't be a detriment to your career. So, uh, on that note, for those of you, uh, don't overthink this job. If you're in the, in the early phases of trying to become a fighter pilot and you're worried about, well, what if I get motion sickness? Well, what if I have to, you know, I can't use a piddle pack, I have to pee. This is, it's too early to be psyching yourselves up about little nitnoid stuff like this. Just realize that if you make it to the point that you've got a pilot slot and you make it to that level, um, where you're, you're on your way to being a pilot or a fighter pilot or whatever, the military has a vested interest in getting you through. It's not a washout program. It's not, uh, they're not constantly evaluating you to get rid of you. They're trying to evaluate what you know so they can push you forward so that you can be a combat asset. So think of that, you know, in pilot training, don't work yourself up over stuff you can't control, like whether I'm gonna get sick or, or any other little things like that because 
you need to be focusing on the mission, you need to be focusing on your procedures, and when you do that, you're not gonna be worried about whether you're gonna get sick, you're gonna forget about it, and then you won't get sick. I mean, the simplest advice is don't think about it because 98% of it is mental. Now, there are a select few that just cannot, you know, with, with aerospace physiology help, with medicine, with all that stuff, they just cannot get through it. And yeah, that will be a, a medical washout because you just, if you're, you're non-functional, you can't go fly an airplane without getting sick. Yeah, you're absolutely gonna wash out, but it's exceedingly rare. I mean, it's just not something that happens a lot. So don't worry about it at this phase in the, in the game. Let, your, let it play out naturally and I think you'll be fine. So if you got any more questions, uh, please feel free to ask uh, in the comment section. You can email me, cwlemoyne at cwlemoyne.com or any of the social media uh, links in the description. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I've got active profiles on all of those that you can do it. All right, so uh, mover mailbag, got another... Uh, package, so to speak, in the mail uh, this week. This comes from Ron in Chicago. And as most of you know, I do law enforcement uh, as well as the writing and uh, aviation. So Ron sent me a cool hat, Chicago PD. It's actually a really nice hat, so it's a CPD on the back. And, uh, RMO. If you don't know, in fire pilot culture, uh, it's round metal object, which is just kind of slang for a coin. It says, uh, Chicago's finest Chicago police, police officer, we serve and protect. And if you can see, I'll focus there. And there's the back. Coin, which I think is really cool. And then this fancy uh, Chicago PD uh, t-shirt. So, awesome. Thanks, Ron. I really appreciate it. Uh, on that note, you know, it's it's kind of been a rough year in 2019 for law enforcement. Uh, There's like five, I think we're pushing six uh, law enforcement uh, line of duty deaths this year. Uh, if you are in law enforcement, please be careful. Just be safe. Um, it, it's It's been far too many. I know we've had a, a rough several years in law enforcement just with lack of support in some areas, but uh, just please be safe. Please be careful. Come home at the end of your shift. Realize that, you know, we've got your back. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your service. And uh, Ron, I really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, sending me that. That's awesome. If you have anything for the mover mailbag, please uh, send it my way. Uh, you can either email me if you got a question, cwl1.com, or if you've got a package, so to speak, to send me. Uh, P.O. Box 8594 here in Mandeville, Louisiana. The address will be somewhere on the screen. So, All right, so that'll do it for today's episode of Money's with Mover. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, like I talked about, you know, with the uh, motion sickness stuff, don't worry about it. Just push forward. Worry about what you can control. Don't try to, you know, it's all mental. It's all something that, you know, you, you'll get over because it's, it's a perception thing. It's not necessarily something that's happening. Um, you know, physiologically that you can't overcome. So uh, with rare exceptions, obviously, um, you know, and on the law enforcement side, you know, it's been a bad year so far. So, you know, if you're uh, in law enforcement and going out every day, thank you for what you do, but please be safe because uh, the war on law enforcement is ongoing and it's just not a, it's not a good time right now. People do not respect uh, the police. So, Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.